the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Your power to save, your power to deliver. Lord, we trust you. Visit your people in a mighty way. Do a quick walk tonight. Change the lives of your people. Give us testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'd like you to walk around to 20 people and tell them you are in for an encounter. Go ahead. Inside, outside, you are in for an encounter. Are you walking around to 20 people? You are only on number four. Number nine. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Honestly. Hallelujah. I am so honored. I believe that I am one of the most privileged spiritual leaders that can ever be because it's one thing to be a good leader. It's another thing to have very faithful, godly, skilled, and loyal people who believe in you. Please help me honor yourselves and honor everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Um, I think I'm a bold person. I consider myself to be a bold person. Um, but I don't know what happens to me when people begin to appreciate me. All that confidence just vanishes. I was almost taking a handkerchief to cover my face. I was asking a Jimmy for support, and he told me he's busy taking care of his wife. So, I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, I hear last week was powerful. Powerful. Let's honor it, Jimmy. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I missed the session, but I followed on Facebook, and my goodness, if you paid attention, you should be on your way to another dimension. Hallelujah. Um, we thank God for the success of our trips. Been busy all through the week. And we thank God. Um, I know that there are thousands of people following online, and I appreciate them, but I especially want us to appreciate our family down at lagos let's bless them please go ahead they are listening they are following us right now <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord um yesterday they embarrassed me in such a way that almost brought tears i had to speak to myself i said mr man you are not going to cry hallelujah it was such an awesome time you cannot imagine uh, what those people did. They did all kinds of things. Also celebrating the birthday from there. And um, I just got a news this morning that Abuja people were on their way to hijack me. And I told them, no, no, no. And so they fixed their own celebration for Monday. Hallelujah. 
all the pastors, all the leaders, all the people, they just insisted and said, look, this time around, Zaria cannot have you alone. So God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Um, my birthdays are very prophetic seasons for me because they represent the circles of my life. Usually when I get to these seasons, they are very prophetic and um, I sincerely want to thank everyone. I thank the leadership. Aaron, thank you. Thank you, heads of department. Let's go to the word. I think the greatest way to celebrate my birthday is to do what I was born to do. Hallelujah. If someone gets healed tonight, someone gets blessed, someone gets direction, then it has justified the celebration. My opinion about birthdays is that no one is allowed to celebrate a birthday until they find their reason for living. Birthdays are not a celebration of how long you have lived, but why you came in the first place. The Lord put his very simple message in my heart for us. I just want to encourage us and then we will pray and we'll allow the Holy Spirit just step in and touch lives. Galatians chapter 6. More of an exhortation. Galatians chapter 6. And we will read verse 9. Galatians 6. And verse 9. The Lord asked me to challenge us tonight on the power of consistency. Consistency. You can also call it the power of persistence. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 from verse 9. Can we read it together please? It's projected. One to read. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Why? For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Hallelujah. One of the hardest, listen please. One of the hardest faces of a believer's life is the period between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass. Are we together? That gap, that time lapse between prophecy and manifestation. So many people have aborted destiny. Listen please. So many people have given up on God just because they did not sustain the capacity to wait until the prophetic word over their life uh, came to fruition. And so the Lord asked me to challenge us. You know, I think a lot and if there is one lesson I think I can learn from my life is persistence and consistency. It's not enough to start. You see, life is not a sprint. Life is a marathon. You know, when you watch people about to run a marathon, the moment they start, you will think the person at the front will eventually arrive first. But there may be someone silent at the back, conserving his energy and moving at a calculated pace. And that person will most likely be the first, whereas the person who started just wasting energy, it may never amount to anything. I have watched with shock at the speed at which people approach life. Anything in life finances, spirituality, ministry, business, whatever it is. And usually, most people do not take the time and the effort to mentally and spiritually analyze how long that journey will be. And so they start out of excitement. Are we together? People start marriages out of excitement. Two years down the line, no child. Two years down the line, no money. Two years down the line, still in a rented apartment. And you will see them vent their frustrations. 
pastors start out ministries just because they feel they are anointed and God spoke to them. Are we together? And after two years, they cannot continue because they are frustrated that after two years, they have only 10 members. Let me tell you something. In the realm of greatness and in this kingdom, what separates ordinary people from champions among other factors, right, is the power of persistence and consistency. Consistency means doing the same thing regardless of the conditions, regardless of the oppositions, regardless of the change in time. Consistency. The Bible says, though the vision tarries, are we together? It says in the end, not the beginning. In the end, it will surely speak. The Bible is full of men and women who you would imagine that their consistency will never yield results. But one day, just like a dream, you will see God lift them like an edifice. Are we together? It was Noah who began to build the ark. When he began to build the ark, it looked like an impossible project. To build an equivalent of two stadia of an ark and bring in all the animals to get gopher wood. That looked like an impossible project. But no one knew that the hand of God was with him. And one plank after the other. There were times they had to take down certain buildings to chisel. But God kept watching a consistent man. Let me tell you something. You frustrate the power of darkness when you are determined to be unbending over your destiny. Life will open up its gates to men and women who have resilience. Not weak people. Always complaining about what God has not done. Always complaining about the four month notice they gave God. Consistency consistency after three years of prayer no breakthrough and you say I don't plan to stop I know that my redeemer lives and you keep sending that incense of prayer to the heavens a time will come people will even look at you and say Mr. Man don't mock yourself and don't mock God but then you remain consistent the Bible says let us not be weary in well doing you started praying for the anointing to come upon your life after three months dissipating spiritual energy praying and it looks like there's nothing in your life and many people just say look there's got to be an easy way let me tell you something not all ways are easy be careful I believe that things can be easy but not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are things that are rewards if everything is a gift, what then is the reward of obedience? Are we together? Consistency. There are too many emotional believers. There are too many emotional destiny people. They start things emotionally and never count the cost. They do not wait to gather the strength for the journey. And they begin things that they do not have capacity to maintain. Are we together? I wish that the people, maybe a Jimmy had time to tell you the challenges that we have faced as a ministry. Many people sit down and see the crowds and see the rich and all the things that God is doing across this nation and across the world. And many people think, ah, this man was just lucky. God just had him. He just happened to be anointed. No, sir. No, sir. What you see is a testament of endurance. It's a testament of consistency. And Elijah prayed and asked his servant, he said, go and check, is there a cloud? When he came back, Elijah would have said, God, don't disappoint me. The Bible says he continued praying. I'm sure at a point the servant would have said, ah, 
consistency. I will never forget our first crusade. The car broke down on the way. That was what we could afford at that time. Hallelujah. You've heard me share it again. Some of the ladies, none of them, I don't think any of them is around right now. Some of the ladies had to climb the tree to plug firewood and some of them were in the worship team. Everybody was in the prayer department slash counseling. Are we together? After the first crusade, the trouble that we entered after the first crusade, if God sent you again after that crusade, you will say, God, send somebody else. But the very next year, the Lord said, go back again to the same place, minister to the same people under the same condition. It's amazing how you talk to God and he will ignore your pain and reply you back and say, continue. As though he were not aware of what you were going through. God, my finances are not speaking and he says, keep tithing. And he says, Lord, this is four years. At least give me a consolation. Let someone sow a shoe into my life. Let me just verify that it's working. And God says, no, it, it doesn't have to be verified. My integrity has been tested too many times. Just continue. One day, hear me, you will cast the last tithe that will cause your vapor the, the cloud in the sky. The Bible says, if the cloud be full of rain. Let me tell you the power of consistency. A man of God gave this analogy and it blessed me so much. If your rain is supposed to fall, hear me, as a result of a tank being filled, your consistency is like the size of the vessel you are using. Are we together? Some of you will use a spoon and pour water in the tank and wake after five years and you are crying. Whereas there are people looking for anything they can fetch this water with. Are we together? They finish praying for eight hours. They just call and say, ah, your mother's case has become worse. They say, no problem. Consistency. I will continue. You know why people fail? Without our convictions when results don't come. And the secret is not to do anything else. It's just to continue doing what you are doing. The ministry of the word, prayer and obedience will always be the master key to all things. Are we together? The law of honor, for instance, was designed to lift men to enviable dimensions. For three years you have honored everyone, but nothing has seemed to work in your life. There was a time in my life I sowed seeds. I was almost sowing myself. Are we together? I, I gave tithes. I gave tithes for seeds that had not yet come to me. I took whole. For instance, if someone gave me 20,000, I will remove 2,000 and still sow 18,000. In advance for 180,000 I expected. That's how much I stretched my faith. Yet nothing seemed to happen. Absolutely nothing. Are we together? We prayed and we cried and we asked God to intervene in certain situations. He didn't come. Oh, he didn't show up. The worst happened, I tell you. But it did not change our convictions. Is God speaking to someone here? We have this, this low capacity that every time things do not happen the way we expect, we just feel we are wrong. The key may be to keep knocking. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, ask and keep asking. Give us Matthew 7, 7, please, amplified. Ask and keep asking. Knock and keep knocking. Seek and keep seeking. You don't knock once. Are we together? Is God challenging us? Consistency. Show me a man that is unbending on his pursuit. Show me a man with a bulldog kind of resilience. I show you a man who will weary failure till he lets him go. 
You know, I said something. If I wake up tomorrow morning blind, I assure you by night, my eyes would have opened. Many of us are not desperate for miracles. The way you approach life, very easy, play it safe, let's be intelligent, we went to school. No, receivers are desperate people. And there are people who will stay. January miracle service. Lord, I'm trusting you for that cancer. You go back to the hospital. The result says even multiplying. February miracle service, you stand again. By March, the devil said, don't mock yourself. Are you not seeing how close you are to your grave? Write a book quickly so that at least your children will have something to eat with. And you refuse. The pain is still there. I know one thing that can weary Satan. I used it against him. Persistence. I tell you, you may not have every spiritual strength you need. You may not understand all the mysteries. But a man who refuses to bend, you have wearied Satan forever. Don't forget that the strength of darkness is the fatigue of humans. The devil knows. Listen to my message. Why revivals fail? Why revivals die? The humanity of men. Satan knows that I cannot be praying forever. And while I'm praying, 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 it looks like nothing is happening. And then the devil just makes it look like there are many ways to get to the palace. Find an alternative. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Are we together? I remember those times I used to borrow shoe and borrow suit to go and preach. When they invited me for a ministration, the person to give me shoes is different. The person to give me suit, at least I could afford shirt. I don't even know how I got it. Are we together? I would wear it and look smart. And sometimes the painful part of it is you'll be asked to teach on prosperity. Do you know how painful it is to teach on something you are a victim of? It takes faith. You are preaching on prosperity. Your shoe is borrowed. Suit borrowed. Yet you have the audacity to say God is still faithful. And someone comes to you. The little honorarium that time, one, two thousand, somebody says he's hungry. You now give him 500 naira from it. They believe you are so rich. And you believe it is true. Even though you do not have any evidence. Persistence. I remember a time when God, I don't know how many times in my life I have emptied my account. I tell you, it will only take maybe my account officer to help calculate. I mean empty 0, 0.00 naira. Not, not reserved for rainy days. I assure you that rainy day will come if you don't secure the roof over your head through diligence and consistency. There were times I would go for ministration and the moment I'm done, God knows that I may not even have transport to go back. And the people will say, man of God, Kai, you are such an anointed man. We'll get back to you and uh, the Lord bless you. Usually God, Kai, I love this God. Quarter to shame, he always shows up. When, when you are about to, when, when it's supposed to backfire, he will just come with a strategy. That's to tell you he's watching. Are we together? God is speaking to someone here. What you may need is not a new principle. You already know the principle. What you need is grace to remain there. Oh, you already know the keys. You have been taught. The fear of the Lord. You have been taught. The ministry of destiny help us. You have been taught. The key is not to learn something new. The key is to stay there and strike on that wall. Oh God, it's five years I'm still barren. They call you at home and say, we just found some, somebody new. Better than the former herbalist. This guy is more effective. And say, no. Stay there. That's what by the grace of God has brought us thus far. Do you know, brothers and sisters, I submit to you, 
the miracles and the things that God has been doing in my life and is doing in my life right now. I had to go back and ask, what am I doing that is new? I found out I wasn't doing anything new. The season had just come. Ah! There is something called an appointed time when your heavens open. Five minutes to your appointed time, it will still look ordinary. Nothing. Ordinary. Until that downpour just comes on you. You will have to call people to say, ah, ah, what, what is happening? You would think it's because of something you told God yesterday. No. Your consistency is now paying off. So the day the child will come, first child, triplets. Second child, twins. People say, oh, God, take it easy. I said, don't ask me to take it easy. I waited eight years. This is balance one per year. And you add and balance it, eight, eight of them. Are we together? Turn to your neighbor and say, I know my season will come. Are we together? Sometimes, let me tell you, listen to my message, spiritual timings. It may be that God is preparing a table for you in a way he wants to garnish that celebration and put honor upon your life. If Joseph were released in Potiphar's house, he would have gone back to his father's house. They would have clapped for him for safe arrival. Go back to the farm and take care of the animal. But God said, no, I need to lift this man. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Hallelujah. I have seen blessings upon my life. The things I used to wish that people would do for me. They do it today and call it a privilege. I fought the Abuja people and they said, Man of God, whether you agree or not, we have come together and we must celebrate your birthday. We are not asking you to bring anything. Years ago, I would have begged. Oh, why don't you celebrate it? Thank God for the mind he gave me to not even frustrate myself. But today, the blessings of God. Let me tell you something. What you see that is a mockery to your life will not last forever. You were not born with it. I prophesy to you, you wouldn't die with it. Are we together? Who said it will be out rent issue forever? Do you not know it has an expiry time? You are paying the rent and they are insulting you, but you are tightening. Just keep watching. You are investing in yourself. Just keep watching. Oh, the naysayers are talking. Let them talk. You need them. They are the enemies that God will prepare a table for you before. Don't stop them. Don't say, Shh, keep quiet. Let them shout the problem loud. So when the solution comes, they will know your God is alive. Are we together? Never be embarrassed when you are crying. Never allow your pain. They will misunderstand you. You will weary yourself trying to explain yourself. It's a waste. They are called critics. They are not friends. For you are God alone. From before time began. You were on your throne. You were God alone. And right now, through the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. For you are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And right
It's 10 years, but you are still in 300 level. Let me tell you, if you wear a matriculation gown, you will wear a convocation gown. I'm not motivating you. This is a prophetic message from the depth of my heart. I show you a secret that weary Satan. When I found it, that Satan had a weak point. Consistency wearies him. Consistency does not mean you will not be tired. You are humans. But with the tears in your eyes, you are saying, I will continue. Lord, you seem so far away. A million miles on what it means today. And though I haven't lost my faith, I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray. That's someone's testimony right now. But I don't know what to say, and I don't know where to start. But as you give the grace, we all that's in my heart, I will see. I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. I will see. Hallelujah. I asked a gentleman to come here. He was about committing suicide from what he told me. Just a few minutes before Koinonia started from aviation. He called me and said, I'm about to take my life. I'm about to kill myself. And I said, come for miracle service. I hope he's here. Let me tell you something. You want to bring joy to the devil? Let him watch you cry in weariness. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's greater than death. Let me tell you, Satan's ultimate desire is not death. That torture pleases him more than death. He likes to see when people cry in defeat. So this is how my life will be. So I went to school for nothing. I paid school fees for nothing. So this is how I will not get married. I'm 39. This is what is going to happen in my life. Oh, so this HIV is true. I thought it was joke. But right now, I'm coming to terms with the fact that I have six months to die. And the devil loves that. That's exactly what he wants. But when he finds people like us who say, Lord... <laughs> blessings or no blessings you have done something to me ah the moment you hear bad news before it lands you attack it with tongues and the devil will say till now and you say you are joking you've not seen anything else when you are about to be weary another strength comes he dug a well and they covered it he said no problem we will dig again dug another well and they covered it he said no problem I learned a lesson from the ants my toilet has a little compartment and I started noticing ants because of the rain they were trying to make a house somewhere there are you getting the point I deliberately refused to pour water on them because the Bible says we should learn from the ants. I'm not a fool, but I'm wise enough to learn from them. I kept watching these ants day and night. And I think when, I'm tra when I traveled, I'm sure my people that work for me came and just cleaned that toilet and washed everything. But I was surprised. I thought they would cry. When I got back, I found out they had started again. I said my message for tonight, consistency consistency have you seen men who you thought it was their end and after two years mama are you still alive he said I'm still alive oh. I told you I would not die at a point in time family members will even discuss and say look let's just encourage her I think we should release her mama says you are joking I'm not going anywhere 
I don't know what the devil has put as a load upon your head and has spoken to you that you will never see the other side of the miracle. I want to announce to you that today, today, that situation must change. Are we together? Yes. Not everybody here is here because they are sick. But I tell you, more people have gone through hell from January till today than they have in the last 10 years. Walk on the road and see people talking to themselves. You think they are talking to you until you wave them and you find out they are not even seeing you. Frustration. They are about to give up. I don't know how many car accidents we saw today. And we did not see the other car that was hit. Meaning the person threw himself out of frustration. The devil, there is a plot from the kingdom of hell to weary believers and make them think God is not faithful. Because that's the whole goal. News after news. Bad news after bad news. And at a point you sit down and say, Kai, is this thing working? Whether I eat my tithe or I pay it, I found out that the same result happens. Nothing. Let me tell you something. It's the waiting process that takes time. The manifestation comes speedily. Learn this. Manifestation does not come with time. It comes overnight. Overnight. All I have needed, I answered provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I want you to make two decisions tonight. One, that you will never complain and grumble again. It looks like an impossible situation. But I want you to make that determination. That from today... I will never find myself opening my mouth to say, God, why? Why me? Why not you? Who else? Make a decision today. Hear me at this miracle service that you will never complain again. That you will tell yourself, my God is good all the time regardless of my experiences. This is how I am. You will never hear me open my mouth and say, God, why now? I wanted tea. Only sugar came. Can you bring bomb vita and hot water? No. God, you are faithful at all times. Are we together? The Bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine. Right? Make that decision. Decision number two. Make up your mind to be ever thankful ever thankful not when you get a testimony make it a lifestyle many of us thank god when they give you a testimony oh a new shoe just arrived a new tie just arrived you must make up your mind let people believe that every day is christmas or new year for you because of your attitude of gratitude People come to your house and you say, Lord, I thank you because you are faithful. Thank you for abundance. You are a good God. And your friend says, I thought you said you just have Gary, no sugar. You say, exactly. You say, somebody just sent you an alert. Abi. No, my God is faithful. That's how I am. In Nigeria, yes, that's how I am. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. God is ministering to you. To the whole Give thanks because he's given 
Jesus Christ, His Son, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. faith in your heart and now let the weak say I am strong, strong. and let, let the, the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done Hallelujah I'm challenging you to make decisions that will keep you consistent. Number one, avoid complaint. Nothing slows down consistency. Nothing produces inconsistency as a life full of bitterness and complaint and grumbling. Let me tell you something. Murmuring is sin. Murmuring is not just wrong. Write it down murmuring is seen you find out from scripture how people perished for murmuring the bible says they limited the holy one by murmuring complaining lord you should have done this lord you should have done this and uh -uh, make a decision under god advise yourself that I need to be consistent and I will never find myself murmuring and complaining again that does not mean everything will be a bed of roses I tell you challenges will come but you must make up your mind make up your mind that you will not murmur number two thanksgiving I told us that's the second decision that will make you consistent in life thanksgiving whether you have a reason to be thankful or not, find a reason. One of our dear ladies in Lagos, we were at their house yesterday to visit with the family. And um, I think I've shared the story. She may even be following online right now. This lady about three years ago, during her birthday, her friends just poured... Um, I can't remember what they poured now. Caustic soda. And the lady became blind. On her birthday, her friends, careless friends rejoicing without sense, poured caustic soda. And now the lady for three, four years now is blind. But let me tell you, I've not seen a human being happier than that lady till yesterday. I promised her that the next time we were in Lagos, we would visit her. We were so tired yesterday, but I made up my mind to visit with the family. And when we got there, she was blind. When she felt my hands, she was shouting, ah, Apostle, she was so happy. They were the first people to give me a birthday gift. Lovely father, lovely mother, lovely everyone. And the lady was so happy, joyful. Never for once did she tell me, Apostle, but will my eyes open? It seemed as though it was not even her business. She was talking to me that she was going abroad because she was in 300 level when she went blind. So nothing for schooling again. She was saying, Apostle, I want to go abroad and study psychology and counseling. And we're laughing. That's a blind person. A blind lady who would have planned to be married maybe by now. Supposedly her destiny shattered. Is it not when your eyes is open that you can see money to collect? very happy lady she challenged me sincerely i thought about that experience even while we came today i said my goodness that means your circumstances do not have to determine the extent of your joy your gratitude you can choose to respond instead of reacting oh this is unfavorable but god is still faithful and lord i thank you everybody say thank you jesus Say it from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you thank God, you frustrate Satan. Thank you, Jesus. 
I thought my, my pension will come. It's five years now. But I thank you. You are still faithful. I thought we'll be able to complete the house in 2014. But till now, we've not even lifted it to lintel level. But I thank you that I have a land. I may not have a structure on it. In one minute, can you find everything God has done in your life and tell him thank you? Forget about what he has not done. If you do not have anything, you are a liar. Go ahead, mention them. Go ahead and mention them. Lord, you are faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for life, for strength, for health. Tell him thank you. I may not have a house, but I am sane enough to even think of sleeping. Are you grateful, Koinonia? Those outside, for some of you, this is your miracle. As you are thanking God, you will find out that that sickness is no more there. It responds to gratitude. Lord, I may not have money, but thank you, I have an account that is ready to receive your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Decision number three that will help you become consistent and persistent is to walk in love. Walk in love. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Once there is no love in your heart, you just punctured the tank of your destiny. Get set for an empty tank. The moment there is no love, it's better that you do not have faith it's better that you do not have faith I guarantee you when all else fail in your life make sure your love does not fail love the antidote to offense you will find men and women who will be sarcastic they will say things ah are you aware that that woman is barren in case they've not told you know it now it's been 8 years all the children you see in a house are adopted. When you hear such a news, it can break your spirit. What if your own friends let you down? What if those you trust, you committed secrets to them about your life and they dashed it on the floor? Let me tell you something. The Bible says, blessed are you when you are not offended. There are a thousand and one reasons to be offended. Believe me when I tell you I have no offense in my life. There is no man on earth that is in any blacklist. I don't even have it. I'm a happy person. Every list is white. Vision and fulfillment. No blacklist. Now, as a leader, you can imagine how people treat you every day. From waking up to all kinds of things. On the road, someone wants to jam you. And then he's insulting you again. And you now turn and tell him, your father or your mother. Or whatever it is that you want to use. And then you quickly remember that, ah, there's miracle service today. No. Are we together? People can be so foolish, they can annoy you. People can be so careless, they can annoy you. Your loved ones can be so insensitive. But you must make up your mind today that you will walk in love. Walk in love and watch how cheap Satan is. Watch how the mountains before you will melt like wax. It says love never fails. Everybody repeat it after me. In Nigeria, where we are looking for insurance and guarantee, I give you one. Are we together? Many insurance companies will come and say, come and work with us. Do business with us. We are 150 years old. We can insure you. We can insure your life and your car. 
I found something in life that does not fail. Greater than potentials. Love never, not love can fail and then readjust itself. Love never fails. I give you the fail proof. The fail proof key to living. Walk in love. Genuinely and passionately make room for love in your heart towards people you don't like towards people who insult you make up your mind that forever the love of God has consumed me and you will see how the anointing will multiply in your life you will see how God will let me tell you I have used this in my life God has used love to turn mountains what my faith could not do my love did for me Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Sing majesty Majesty Sing majesty Majesty Forever we are changed Forever we are changed by your love we're in, in the, the presence, presence of your majesty. I'd like you to pray for yourself in one minute and say, Lord, take away bitterness from my heart. That, 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 that spirit of bitterness and anger that rejoices when I'm afflicting pain at others. Oh, apostle, you don't know what they did to me. I don't care. I don't care what happened to you. Walking in love is a choice. Walking in love is a choice. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. You can choose to walk in love. I will never forget, forgive that woman till Jesus comes. Then you are not ready to see the power of God in your life. The third decision that can make you consistent is to walk in love. Anytime, every time, at all times. Hallelujah. Never allow yourself be a victim of communicating lack of love I hate this person are you aware that I hate Pastor Alpha are you aware that I hate my man I'm just keeping quiet the day his cup will be full see let me tell you those who talk like that never go far don't you ever think you will compromise on the law of love and get miracles only herbalists give miracles without love the, the initiator of miracles is love he was moved with compassion he saw them as sheep without shepherd although they were insulting him he said father forgive them for they know not what they do love love the last decision that will help you become consistent are you ready is vision vision the Bible says without vision, the people perish. The word perish was not accurately translated. The word there is to cast off restraint. In other words, to veer off from a path. Vision. And nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophecy that backs it. Nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophetic word that came with that vision. I may not remember what I said, but God told me. I remember. God told me I would build that house. I remember what he told me in 200 level. That I would be a PhD holder. God told me. Prophecy is powerful. It keeps men consistent. The moment you are about to gas out, a prophetic word comes. And God says, what did I tell you before you got married? Did I not tell you after four years I will lift you? You are just in the third year. Don't give up. 
my word still stands and it supplies strength and you can fire on. What did I tell you before you would start that business? I told you that I will lift you. And so you stand. Many of us forget the prophetic words upon our lives. We trivialize it. Now I know that we live in a generation where everybody is a prophet. Somebody just sees you and says something that is not worth remembering. But I tell you, when you hear something that is of God, there are things God has spoken about in my life, I even forgot them. When they happened, I went back, I had to go back and check my notes and said, my God, you said this. You said this. The first time God spoke to me about koinonia was 2005. I wrote it down, but I didn't pay attention. So when God spoke to me about starting it, I think it was last year or so, I was going through all of my notes during my retreat and I saw it there. I said, my goodness. When God speaks, hear me, he is worth believing. Whether you have any evidence or not, just believe him foolishly. God, you said by December I will own a house. This is June. There is no land available. I have 5,000 in my account, home and abroad. And God says, so what? I never told you you will buy the house. I said you will have a house. There are many ways to have a house. It can be given. Someone can lack his sleep and God says, this is the man to bless. You know, many of us don't believe God can move in these dimensions. I believe him. Absolutely. I believe him. Are we together? I believe God with all my heart because I know he is faithful. There are things he has said to us as a ministry. There are things he has said to me as a person. I have watched one by one. One by one. And there are many more that will come to pass. I want to ask you a question. What has God said concerning your life? What prophecy has come upon you? As a family of faith, God declared unto us that this is our year of what? Multiplied grace and influence. God saw fuel crisis when he made that statement. God saw the dollar nose diving, the naira nose diving when he made that statement. It's up to you to remain consistent or join those who are making noise and perish with them. God's obsession is to be trusted. He wants to be trusted. Are we together? If he said it, I believe it. If it does not work, at least I won't die. But I know that I believe him. Do you believe God? Let me tell you something. There is nothing God will tell you that looks possible. If God tells you something that looks possible, you didn't hear him. Because God speaks from his realm. He will never tell you what is possible. Your brain and your job can tell you, save to 200,000. In five months, you have one million. Go and buy Toyota Camry. That's your brain. But God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. And he said, God, how? The how is none of your business. Here's how the Bible puts it. He said, just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. God walks in mysterious ways. Are we together? Somebody called me. He's getting married next month. And he said they did the budget. They, they updated it and it was 2.7. I said, how much do you have? And he said he has 40,000. And I said, don't, don't laugh. I'm, I'm, listen, he's not an irresponsible person. I can tell you this. It's just that he, he's in a situation right now and he needs a miracle. And he said, man of God, will this thing come to pass? I said, you even have 40,000 and you are complaining. Ask those who had only five loaf and two fish and were about to feed 5,000 people immediately. Time was not given. Immediately, five loaf. I love Jesus. What a man that inspires me. Five loaf and two fishes. And he said, ask them to sit down. If you don't believe God enough to sit down, no bread for you. You have to, you have to prove that you, sitting down means be at rest. 
because your standing is let me watch in case it doesn't happen let me quickly dodge and God says I don't walk like that you must be still then you will know that I am God you can't be busy and say Lord be proving it while I wage my faith because I'm used to you disappointing me no ah I love Esther if I perish I perish are there such people this night men who will believe God are motivating you and speaking over your life to continue and be consistent who told you it will never come to pass the person who is laughing at you is also on earth trying to figure out his own life what confidence do they have it's like two people you are writing exams and the person is laughing and say you are sweating Abby. whereas he's writing the same exam is he not foolish I'm speaking to somebody here by the spirit of the living God that the Egyptians you see today that have mocked you kabakasuta pratika pariata the Egyptians you see today you are not the first to see Egyptians this man standing before you lives with Egyptians it's not that I saw them there 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 is a level you get to as a leader you don't conquer challenges you walk through them they are they become your companions <laughs> ah yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil he says for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me then he says this thou prepare you are not in a hurry you are taking your time to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies We are going to pray. God is ministering to us. Please, I want to challenge somebody. Go back and hold that thing you were doing and continue. I don't know who asked you to stop that business. I know what stopped you. Pain stopped you. You opened the shop and everything dried. Go and open it again. Let them laugh at you. Go and open it. When you succeed, they will bite their words again. Are we together? Yeah. Don't mind Nigerians and their sarcastic way of laughing people out of destiny. That's why only few people ever succeed. Are we together? The Lord is asking me to prophesy to someone here that you should go back to what he asks you to do. God asks you to put your hand on that plow. I'm speaking specifically concerning work and career and business. There are people God directed to certain things. But because of your pain and failure, you are saying, look, um, I, I want to follow the path of least resistance. That's the path of failures. Are we together? Yeah. Never allow pain stop you from being consistent never allow the mockery of people while they were mocking noah he was busy building the ark while they were mocking him after 90 years he continued 100 years he continued after 120 years god said noah get into the ark i'm about to send the rain as i said god told you this year you will hold your first million and you are saying, God, this is June. This is June. And God says, don't insult me. I am more than able to wipe your tears. It's up to you to believe God. Oh, this year, you will get married. God, as I'm speaking to you right now, there is no man in my life. The last man who came, came as, as careless as he came. That's how he went. And God says, it doesn't matter. How long does it take to settle you? Let me tell you, it doesn't take time to marry. It just takes vision and finances. Once there is no money, you shift dates. When God brings his blessings, he brings every resource to make it happen. Are we together? Yeah. God said you will be gainfully employed this year. It's June. And the last place where you were holding on to, Air Force, just came out day before yesterday. Your name is not there. Are we together? The person who would help you just called and said, look, young man, um, 
I thought we'll be able to fix you up at Shell or Chevron. But I'm sad to announce to you, even us, we are standing to maintain our position. And then you will know that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. That's the time to hand over to God. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord. One more time. Lord, I believe. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. We are going to pray. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. Rise up on your feet. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. and say Lord I challenge unbelief I'm a believer you are not a liar when you speak you bring your word to pass are you praying inside and outside I believe you I believe you, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. Manda Prata Shabarada Baladaba Kosa Pradiga de Baladaba. Go ahead and say, Lord, I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. I hold on to prophecy. I hold on to prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry before God. Tell him what must happen in your life this night. What you are tired of that must leave you today. Not tomorrow. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. The power of God is able to touch you and change your situation. You've had the testimonies of others. Pray, pray. Is part of the meeting. A 
Tonight, I hold on to the four horns of the altar. Don't stop, you are praying. The Lord will do a quick work here tonight. Change my story, oh God. Change that genotype, oh God. Open up that womb, oh God. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, you are welcome. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way. Heal and deliver in this place. Heal and deliver. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everybody. Tonight will be an extraordinary night. It will be very fast what the Lord will do. Very fast. The message is what you have received. Very fast. I like you to expect miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, no instruments. Stop. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. That's the instruction God is giving me. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. I want to pray, and I'm hearing the word breakthrough. That's the first thing I'm praying for. Listen, please. The moment I begin to pray that prayer of breakthrough, I want you to bring everyone under the anointing for that word. For some of you to surprise you the way the power of God will come upon you. I tell you, the moment the power of God touches you, know that this prophecy is for you. I hear the word breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. Right now. I stretch my hands across the length and breadth of this congregation right now everyone under the influence of this prophetic word right now right now right now the first overflow outside right now right now right now breakthrough 
There is an angel of the Lord identifying men. Breakthrough. Bring them in. Breakthrough. Katala kata. Zekata rekotosia. It's time for you to step into levels of breakthrough. 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 I prophesied as I mentioned that word. The grace, the anointing is visiting you. That stumbling block leaves you now. Breakthrough. 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 Angels of breakthrough. I release them across this congregation. Right now. In all the overflows. The thousands following us online. Breakthrough. The power of God is touching you. Right where you are. Right now. Right where you are. Breakthrough. Shaba katala katia. Mande brakesi kataya. The Lord will do a quick walk tonight. A quick walk tonight. He's touching you without delay. Without delay. If it's your case, God visits you at once. If it's your case, God visits you at once. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. That's what I hear in my spirit. There are still others. There are still others. I see another wave of anointing coming. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. That's what God is bringing right now. We'll be very fast tonight. Our time is gone. I tell you, there is enough anointing for anything you want. It's going to be a fast word. The Lord told me once, I mentioned the case. His power moves. I hear delay in my spirit. Get ready. Keep playing, Mike. Be sensitive, please. The strings. Right now, everyone under the influence of the spirit of delay. Delay. Just for delay. Right now. Right now, like a string cut from you. Right now, like a string cut from you. Inside and outside. I command that spirit to leave. Delay, delay, delay. Any destiny here. Under the influence of delay, you can't stand it. You can't stand it. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost destroying delay. That embargo of delay, you are caused by the God of heaven, caused by the God of heaven, caused by the God of heaven. The spirit of delay, I curse you over God's people. This is a miracle service. Delay that has kept you down, that has kept you down, that has kept your family down. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. The Lord wants to visit families. The second overflow outside. I see the Lord touching men. As I begin to pray right now. Every family. Under any embargo. At the count of three. Fire falls on you now. One. Two. Three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Inside. Outside. Embargoes. Over families. Embargoes over families. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire by the message of the God of heaven. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. It's coming on you like rain, like the dew of heaven. Take that fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who this mama is. But madam, an angel of the Lord is touching you right now. As I'm speaking to you, fire is coming upon you. An angel of the Lord right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh God, 
Once again, confirm this call and anointing. Harapo shopara tu sotopan. Gepereto supreti sekete baladaba. Hallelujah. 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 I'm seeing several gates opening. Hear me. And the Lord said, this is the womb of many people. Please, I want to pray for you right now. The Lord is opening barren wombs. That's what God is showing me. Whether miscarriage or no children completely, I don't care what it is. Lift your hands for you and for your loved ones. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the power to perform be released right now. Every barren womb for you and your loved ones. I open it right now, right now, right now, right now. I open every barren womb. I open every barren womb right now. Every barren womb. Be open. Be open. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Kapatalaka. Reposia. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Be open. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. I command every closed door over your destiny. Open up the gates. The gates. Open up the doors. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every door over my destiny be open right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Be open. There is an anointing to open it. Every gate, every door, kaparakata, kepere shopa. Fire is burning in this place. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every chain tying my life, stopping me from making progress. In the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Open your mouth and pray. I break that chain. I break that chain. Kabataya. It's time to move forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, change. Shakata pakata leke teke te, reke teke teke te be de bosh. Embreke te koto soto koto sh. Makata ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to challenge powers. I tell you, there are spirits that sit on the destinies of people. I believe that the prayer I'm about to pray for you right now will challenge this spirit. Hear me. There are men, there are women under the influence of strange spirits that's right that will stop them from advancing but right now at the count of three everywhere in all the overflows father i pray once again validate this anointing once again validate this apostolic and prophetic call at the count of three 
I want you to shout the name Jesus and I command every spirit to leave. One, two, three. Right now, right now, every power, every spirit, every power, every spirit, out of them now, out of their destiny now, strange spirits, strange spirits, like fire, it comes upon you. The refiner's fire setting men free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Lift your hands. I tell you, I feel this thing on me right now. Ah! I want to pray for you. Watch this. The Lord is showing me a vision. And this is what I see. I see stones and I see fire falling on it. And the Lord says, these are the altars that have kept destinies down. Hear me. If you belong to this category, physical fire, physical fire will come on you. That devil must give way. Right now, I stand upon this apostolic call. I stand upon this prophetic call. Right now, fire 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 on every devil fire on every spirit fire on every altar let it burn 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 every altar let it burn every altar release God's people Release God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying. I see the Lord giving certain men direction. That direction will come like an anointing. You are asking God, what should I do? Where should I go? Right now, where are they, oh God? The power of God is coming on them. That's direction. You are receiving direction right now. Wherever you are, direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Confusion is ending. Direction on ministry. Direction on career. Direction on marriage. It comes to you right now. Right now. By the anointing. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction. That we should pray in the spirit for five minutes intensely just do what i'm asking you to do something will happen to you go ahead blast in tongues for the next five minutes <laughs> Come on, pray. Rekoto shokata ba 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 ba. Mata kapa koto shokotesh. E plus kapa rata ba ba ba. Mata prakata na kate. Kapa rikete. E rekoto shopekeria. E rekoto toto kata tata tata. Kapa rata ba kase. Rekete tete. Fire is burning. Rapa kata tata tata. Fire is burning. I tell you, pray in the spirit. Fire is burning. Rekete te 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 te. Embrekete go shota. Rakata bakata rekete. Rekoto shop rekete. Embroko shop braski ba 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 ba. Bata braska baria ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. 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 Who is Regina? 
Regina, I hear a name Regina. Regina. Fire is burning in this place. The Lord is going to do a quick walk. Quick walk. Mighty walk. No power will stand tonight. No power will stand tonight. I command every power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. You know, bad days are times when unusual requests are granted. It was during Herod's birthday that the head of a prophet went. Are we together? The best way to celebrate your birthday is to dethrone principalities and powers. Every spirit represented here I'm saying it again right now. No matter where you are hiding, I stand under this apostolic and prophetic anointing. If I be called and sent of God right now, at the count of three, on your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Pack your load pack your failure out of their destinies hallelujah Regina you are Regina ma please come, come on I have to pray for you I'm looking at you ma and I'm seeing the spirit of death upon you don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. I look at you and I'm looking at a corpse like somebody that has died. I'm seeing uh, what they call it, um, um, cotton wool in the nose and the ears as I'm looking at you physically. And the Lord is saying it's time for your miracle. I don't know what is wrong with you. Come, walk to me, man. Hold my hands. Right now I command that spirit. Your time is over right now out right now be gone now be gone right now out 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 by the power of the holy ghost it's time for this woman's deliverance who brought her who brought this madam what's wrong with her come talk to me Oh, chronic leg ulcer. Ah, I see it here. It's not healing. What is it? It's rotting or something. It's rotting. It's refusing to dry up. That devil. Madam, you feel pain on your legs? Pain on your legs. You believe God will heal you? A spirit just left you. That's what they call leg ulcer. And the reason, I don't know if they diagnosed you, but I'm looking at you and I'm not even seeing a woman healed of ulcer. I'm seeing a woman healed of diabetes. Huh? That's the cause of this thing. That's why it's not here. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit is telling me. This thing is diabetes and that's why this thing is not healing. Stand up. Walk. Carry her up. Oh God, help your mother now. Why are you watching? Madam, look at me in the name of Jesus Christ no no you don't have to lift it I bring life to these legs look at me look at me look at me don't look at the legs move it move it go ahead don't be afraid just look at me move it go ahead move it move it walk come come to me come come lift it up lift it up lift it up lift it up look at this go ahead lift it up look at this Look at a miracle happening to her. She's still under the power of the Holy Ghost. A miracle is happening to her. In the name of Jesus, lift it up. That devil goes. I command it to dry now. Not later, right now. It dries up. Dries up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Lord Regina. Hallelujah. There is a lady from Kogi State. 
right now, I don't know where she is, but you will locate her by a shout. I sincerely don't know what I'm saying. It's under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There is bondage that has been for so long in your family. And God is saying today, you are, you are set free from Kogi State. One lady, fire will land on her wherever she is. Whether it, where is she from? Who knows her? Where is she from? Eh? Is she from Kogi State? Bring her out. It's time for the salvation of your family. I stretch my hands on you and I challenge every altar standing against your family. They must let you go right now. Right now. Release her. I stand by an anointing and I, I challenge you. You are living right now. The Lord of Sabaoth brings judgment upon you. In the name of Jesus. Right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Release her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I don't know what God is doing with Kogi people. I'm hearing Okene, 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 Okene. Okene is a place in Kogi state. There is a visitation coming to that territory. Right now. People who belong from that territory. An anointing is coming right now. I'm not saying you should clap. I'm saying you should receive right now i don't know where they are but all those from okene i release an anointing right now by the power of the holy ghost inside and outside strange visitations god is bringing visitation to that territory right now if you are from that place that name is a code in the spirit it locates you wherever you are in the name of the lord jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, stretch your hands towards me. I see something. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Stretch your hands towards me. I see something like medals being given to people. And the Lord is saying, as this medal comes, He's increasing the grace upon their lives. Like medals. That's what I'm saying. And the Lord said, You should stretch your hands. I release my hands back to you right now. Not everybody, but there are people wherever they are. Shatabata, teke te te te, e parakata, shaparikete. Rise, 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 rise in the spirit, rise in the spirit, rise in the spirit. Kabata ta ti ke te, e re ke te 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 te. Kabaratu zoporia. Hallelujah. Prayer HOD. Come and hold your hands of your assistant quickly. Come and stand, two of you. Hold your hands and lift it up. A new grace. The gifts of the Spirit is coming on both of you right now. Strange gift. The Lord is saying it's the season for you to begin to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Lift your hands. I see gifts falling on people. Gifts falling on people. Gift, 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 gift right now. Gift, help them please. Help them. Gift, there are men of God receiving gifts. Men of God, men in ministry receiving gifts right now. I activate it. I activate it. Kapatayada. I activate it right now, right now. Gift, gift, the prophetic. Gift, the prophetic. Gift the prophetic eyes to see, ears to hear, eyes to see, ears to hear. Kaba shakata, badi kata di kabaritos. 
Job said there is a part which no eye has seen. The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I'm still praying for gifts again because I see it. Hear me. There are many people you don't hear me pray this prayer but I hear word of knowledge. There are people who need to step into the revelatory gifts of the spirit. Wherever you are, I stand upon this anointing. Receive it right now. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Ay, 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 ay. Revelatory gifts. Kapatata. Rakatatata. Abarata. I stretch my hands. Step into that level. The word of knowledge. The gift of prophecy. The discerning of spirits. Ay, 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 Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at a vision the Lord is showing me, and I'm seeing the exact color of my dress. And the Lord says it's a mantle of favor. Listen, it's going to mantle people right now as I speak. Please hear me. Lift your hands. Favor. It's a mantle. You can wear it like a garment. Father, I pray there are people, this is the miracle you need. That mantle of favor. Across this building, the overflow, the next overflow, online, right now, on everyone, everyone under the sound of my voice, may mantles of favor come upon you right now. Mantles of favor come upon you right now. Lord, on everyone, let no one be left. Let no one be left. Wear it like a garment. Wear it like a garment. Wear it like a garment. Let it open strange doors for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. My goodness. Now, listen. Before we pray for the sick, there's no time to just pray and ask them to come. And so we pray for the sick but before we do that if you have your prayer request lift it up this is very strange what the Lord shows me usually we bring it out and lay it here but the Lord is asking please if it's in a phone maybe your loved ones wrote it lift the phone up it's not we're not playing games please please don't come and waste your time there is a God that answers prayers my dear come you are Regina. I have to pray for you. Because the Lord is telling me that he wants to end captivity in your family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a lot of suffering and pain in your family. And the Lord is asking that I pray for you. Number one. Number two, for you. The Lord is saying I should tell you. It stops. I don't know what is that. But the Lord is saying it stops. From today it stops. Hold my hands. Father bring your word to pass in the life of this lady right now in the name of Jesus over your family I command that that pain that captivity comes to an end and for you the prophecy is that it stops I don't know what it is but I stop it right now right now right now right now right now it stops 
Ende la rusa pras kubarita shubriata baladaba. Those online, I know that there are hundreds of prayer requests. No problem. The media department is stretching it by faith. Those outside, don't worry, you will lift it before we submit it. If there's something you should write and you've not written, you will quickly write it before we pray. But the Lord is just asking me to lift it up. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray on it. And the Lord says for us to hold it and just pray in tongues for just a minute. Seriously and violently on your request. Are we together? In one minute, just speak over it. Are you not the God that answers prayers? Lord, when you speak, it may look foolish. When you speak, it may look foolish. But we choose to be foolish in obedience to your word. Pray! Answers are falling. Answers are falling from heaven. Just in one minute. Answers are falling. Answers are falling. Hallelujah. Please lift it up. Lift it up. I want to speak over it. The Lord is going to open the eyes of many people here as I pray. And you will see the requests on fire. Physically. At least I see seven people having this experience. Physically. You will see fire. I'm not saying physical fire. I'm saying when the Lord opens your eyes, you will see it as though burning. That's what is going to happen. Father, you have given an instruction we are foolish enough to obey you. Right now, upon this request, the fire that brings performance. The fire that brings answers. Let it begin to follow God on prayer requests right now. Let the fire that brings answers fall on them turning the requests into testimonies turning the requests kabashikata ente karata there's authority in this place turning the requests into testimonies hallelujah now begin to forward them to the ushers please ushers quickly start collecting them while they are doing that please be careful with those in front some of them are under the anointing, so don't match them. You are here trusting God for healing. Specifically, I want to lay my hands on you now. Make your way to the front. You came with a sick person. It's time to bring them to the front very quickly. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. I like you to believe the Lord. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. Let your faith be alive. The power of God is already touching people. It's flowing. Please listen. I don't care what the name of that sickness is. You must refuse and insist that plus your hair falling, you must be healed. Are you hearing? Don't say this one is not serious. Uh-uh. 
when you are coming here insist and say lord from my head to my toe i must be healed as we minister to you by the power of the holy ghost the anointing is already touching people some of you we may not even need to come close to you it's the power of god while that is happening i want everybody in the congregation we are going to maintain an attitude of prayer no carelessness and gisting around begin to speak to god concerning your prayer request there are so many people we are proud to tell you this is a place of healing in every city and in every territory god must find a place where he can extend his healing power to his people the lord is showing me all kinds of infirmities hiv diabetes tumor breast lump breast lump a lot of breast lump the lord is going to heal you hallelujah Jimmy, please come. We're going to pray. Listen, there is the anointing upon him. Come, Jimmy. There's fire upon my hands, and I want you to touch that anointing. Go ahead. That anointing. That's what the Lord says. I should tell you to touch my hands and touch that healing anointing, that healing power. Miracle worker. Ah, you are the miracle worker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Father, please heal everyone here. Everyone. And for those you are standing for, you have the photos of any everyone. Don't worry. While we are coming, just show the photos, whether it's phone or whatever. We will lay hands on it. Believe God. Please, no commotion. As we pray for you, just gently walk to your seat. Because of time, we don't take instant testimonies. Please forgive us. But make sure you are praying. Don't just stand looking at others carelessly. Let your heart be open. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Help us. You made a way. Stretch your hands towards the prayer requests and begin to speak over them thank you jesus go ahead those those being prayed for don't worry just focus we're praying for you but everyone pray on the request out right now stretch your hands on the request and pray i command the spirit of death to leave you right now please stretch your hands make sure you are talking to the lord we are not just whiling away time you can move the mountains prophesy and say lord Visit me, you will visit my request. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say. Right now, go forever, never to return. 
I command that spirit to leave her. Ashes will rise. There's no one like Out. you. Out. Out. Oh, right now. There's none like you. Lift your voice and say, Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any honor. for us is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest God's desire and God's plan for us according to scripture is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest Psalm 91 verse 16 please very quickly write down that point and then we'll look at a few scriptures God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Psalm 91 verse 16, please. Everyone read, one, two, read. One more time. This is the Bible. This is the truth of God's word. It says, for with long life, will i give him did he say will i give him that means there is a satisfaction that comes when a man enjoys longevity are you getting blessed it says for with long life will i satisfy him and in it i will show him my salvation number two exodus chapter 23 Verse 26. Please, media, you'll be really fast. You'll help us. There are lots of scriptures to look at. And all of them are important. We're establishing the first point tonight. That it is God's desire and plan for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Exodus 23, verse 26. 23, 26. Hallelujah. Everyone read. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of thy days. There is an appointment with long life. There is an appointment from the throne. From eternity before you came. And it says the number of your days I will fulfill it. So that's the first point I want us to establish tonight. And listen people I want you to realize that. Um, I'm a human being. I understand 
that many of us are receiving this point with heavy hearts because you are comparing this truth of God's word versus the reality that for some of us have happened in recent times and for all of us as a house having to mourn the transition of our dear one but the Bible says forever O Lord thy word is settled a believer is not just one who has given his heart to the Lord a believer is one who has submitted to the authority of God's word as the final say regardless of your experience this is what makes you a believer is you are not a believer just because you were born again you are a believer because you have come to a point where you have chosen willfully to allow the word of God take precedence and become the final authority over your life say amen do you believe what I'm teaching you? You must realize that you are not just a believer because you got born again and you are going to heaven. You are a believer like a wife who submits to her husband. Even if she does not like the way he's behaving, even if she does not understand her covenant of marriage, her covenant of being with him will force her to submit. Sometimes he may beat her he may be a foolish man, but she has chosen as a submissive wife that I will submit to his authority and I will bear his son name. That's what it means to be a believer. To be a believer is not to love God when you can explain things. To be a believer is that in the midst of your joy, in the midst of your tears, in the midst of your clarity, in the midst of confusion, regardless of what happens in your life, the word of God stands irrefutable and unarguable in your life is God speaking to us are we growing as believers this is a very mature teaching tonight if you do not come to a point where you exalt the word of God above your life you will backslide and you will run away from God that's why we have many atheists today many of them were church children many of them were folks in Baptist and Presbyterian churches but their lives were surrounded by so much confusion and because they think that God has to be boxed to the limitation of their finite minds after a prolonged period of disappointment that disappointment builds a mentality and a stronghold that permits the operation of demon spirits and their conclusion is that God is a liar and their conclusion is that the Bible is not true their conclusion is something is wrong there is a deceit somewhere but the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate He's slow to anger rich in love from everlasting to everlasting he says thou art God hallelujah it is God's desire for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest do you believe that point number two make sure you're writing point number two the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time the Bible did not hide it from us it didn't leave it as a secret is clearly stated in the Bible that it is possible that although this is the desire it is absolutely possible supported by scripture that a man can die before his time open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life open bracket and write this especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life this is a very hard teaching for many of us tonight but it will test your love for god the bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time ecclesiastes 7 17 quickly ecclesiastes 7 17 and psalm 55 verse 23 we'll look at those Ecclesiastes 7 17 the Bible also teaches us under this point that the life of a man can be added and can be subtracted not only can the life be cut short the Bible shows us that someone's life can be added to 
and someone's life can be subtracted. 717 Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. Okay, let's just let's just turn while they're trying to help her. Okay. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read everyone. One to read. Why should thou die before your time? We are still going to revisit this verse. It says, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou what? Die. It's a question. It's just the, the B part I want us to focus on. Why? It's a question. That means it is a possibility that although these are the provisions, the same way God designed for everyone to be prosperous the bible says that um how did he put it now he says the proceed of the earth is for the profit in of all but there are people today who love god and they are still poor is that true there are people today who love god and cannot afford to feed their children but it does not stop the fact that god is a loving god and he has shown a formula for prosperity why should thou die before your time so the bible shows us that it is a possibility that a man can die before his time psalm 55 verse 23 55 verse 23 are we there all right go ahead and read everyone those outside we apologize looks like they are not seeing the projection but just follow us very carefully one to read shall bring them down into the pit of destruction bloody and deceitful men shall not live out what half their days they will not even live up to half their days now forget that he's talking about wicked people i'm just showing you that there is a possibility that life can be added, can be cut short, can be multiplied, can be divided, can be subtracted. This is the infallible word of God. Hallelujah. So although God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest, the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. Point number three. This is a hard one now. Receive grace to receive it. Ready? The Bible re reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time. Write it down. The Bible reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time. Isaiah 65 verse 20. Hallelujah You have won the victory Hallelujah You have won it all for me Death could not hold So 
behind us dying before our time 65 verse 20 of isaiah go ahead and read one to read nor an old man that had not what go ahead and read this is the prophet speaking the mind of god to the people of god he says there shall be no more infant of days nor an old man that had not filled his days for a child shall die a hundred years old brothers and sisters the bible says but as many as believed him he gave them power to become as many as believed him he gave them power to become hallelujah one more scripture Ezekiel 18 verse 32 Ezekiel Shiva Kataparoto Suprati Go ahead and read One to read Stop For what? One more time One more time This is God speaking One more time Read on Do you believe this please listen 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 i'm a human being are you getting me i understand the reality i understand the pain i i understand the gravity are you getting me of of um you will only need to be a leader to understand what it means to manage tragic issues in families and this is consistent I have been to mortuaries. I have prayed for people. We have lost loved ones in far and near. And all kinds of things have happened. But I choose to be a believer. I choose to be a believer. I lift my hands in worship. As I sing. Praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to your name. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Say it who? Say it, prophet Ezekiel saith the lord god wherefore as a result of the above turn yourselves and leave ye next point this is a very serious one and i want us to pay attention to it ready satan comma the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys john 10 10 please satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys write this before we look at the scripture in continuation he has strategies through which he achieves this mission 
Satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills and destroys. He has strategies through which he achieves this mission. Continue writing. Topmost among the strategies are sicknesses, suicides, accidents. Write it down. Topmost among these strategies are sicknesses. You can write afflictions too. Suicide. Accidents. These are his most common strategy of attempting to cut short lives. These are his most common strategies. 95% 95% of the transitions and the demise of human beings from the earth is as a result of sicknesses and infirmities, suicides, accidents of all sorts, fire, all kinds of things, destruction. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not, meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission the thief cometh not meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this to steal and to kill and to destroy but Jesus the son of the living God said I am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly the thief Satan there are many names that he's given in the Bible. He's given the serpent. He's given the dragon. He's given the thief. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He's called the adversary. He's called the destroyer. And Satan has a strategy. Please let me have your attention now. Satan has a strategy. There is a series by the grace of God on angels. That we are going to be teaching subsequently. And under that series of angels, I'm going to be teaching us on the origin of angels. And we are going to examine this man or this entity called Satan. Praise the Lord. I want us to look very carefully in that series. There are a few things about Satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser. Do you know now many of you are going to be surprised but do you know that of all wicked spirits Satan is not the most dangerous. There are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain they were deliberately not released because the bible says if they are released even the elect will not stand the question is at what point were they bound and what did they do hallelujah when you begin to read don't turn there the book of ezekiel 28 the bible begins to speak of an ancient king We don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels look up many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels no no the word angel comes from the greek word angelio and it means a messenger let me tell you a few things look up please when ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called lucifer the Bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man that was a king over nations and over kingdoms. Is that true? Is, are, are you a believer? You believe the Bible? Is that true? It raises up a lamentation against a king that ruled over a place called Tyre and says, Thou which subdued nations talked about the making of Satan 
and then he said how that he ruled nations and territories inhabitants in the earth present at that time watch this let me just give you a quick analogy everyone look up this is an academic environment so let me attempt to communicate a few things i think it's important we get this look look at this imagine for instance that there was a student when our daddy prof was a student let's assume right that there was a notorious student at that point during the time of our daddy when he was in school are you getting that point and that notorious criminal had access to the senate please follow me a notorious criminal are you getting what i'm saying and because of that something happened at that time watch this that notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor are you getting me now because probably he was given the privilege of being an SUG president and so he had some level of dominance over the students are you following what I'm saying now on the strength of that he led a rebellion as at the time he did that daddy was a student are you getting what I'm saying now he is long graduated but that notorious Capone is still lingering around ABU are you getting what I'm saying now after so many decades a new set comes into that same abu are you getting my point and then you hear that people there is one notorious criminal that has been here this guy has been here for a long time are you getting what i'm saying he's an illegal occupant he's not a student but he has refused to leave that territory watch out for him he has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students u61 u62 u60 whatever till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of abu are you hearing what i'm saying that abu that's why when you measure it you find out that you are young but they tell you abu is 50 years whereas you are just four years are, are you getting my analogy is it making sense to you when he was the student he was not the most notorious student he was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history there are other notorious students cultists that were driven away are you getting what i'm saying but it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university now watch this let me tell you something I don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us but we'll have that series by the grace of God did you know that angels were once mortal beings are you getting what I'm saying now there was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth their dispensation ended and the ones who are with Christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation. Just like, imagine that Jesus comes now. I hope you know when Jesus comes, our dispensation is ended. But the program of God still proceeds. We do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas. But we know the Bible tells us there is, a, there is an age to come. And there is a power that is left for that age to come and by reason of alignment we can taste of that power what age we do not know the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations so I guarantee you we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization but not the last as far as creation as far as as advancement as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know who knows maybe in another dispensation we will be sent to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of god if allowed and we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of god in that dispensation they will call us angels
I will see of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Now watch this. When we get to heaven, there will not, the Bible does not record the concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven. Is that true? So if in the earth, in my earth life, for instance, this was my wife, these were our children. When we get to heaven, we all become brothers and sisters. Are you getting what I'm saying? We all become brothers and sisters. I can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants. And they can look at me and say, wow, who is this strange being? But they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life. It is this aberration that was, that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation. This is what some of the fallen angels taught people and taught our forefathers and said, forget the people you are seeing now, they have been before. Listen. The dispensation before our own there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them there was nothing called invisible and visible that concept did not exist are you getting my point the dispensations before us you could access the heavens and access the earth now it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning so Adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation we never had the opportunity to see what we could do for instance there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction they recorded rulership and they recorded who knows if adam did not fall and eve would have had the opportunity because he still would have given birth you understand he would have given birth in his perfected state we would have seen the son of adam a womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature that's why in all of the dispensations is only our dispensation that brought Jesus the son of the living God to come and die please let's continue that's for another time I'm just trying to show you that the one you call Satan Lucifer he was once a king in a dispensation hmm. the king of Tyre that ruled upon nations that's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be are you getting me now those spirits together with Satan were the brains behind the building of the tower of Babel they were attempting to bring back a dispensation to create a rebellion that once was that was why solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. Geography today, geography, they have found castles thousands of meters under the earth. They have found ancient castles. Did you know that there was a dispensation where, where we are standing now was water, not land? The same way that place, where is the Mount of Ararat? Where the the ark of Noah rested. Where is it in the earth today? We know Everest to be the highest. Where is Mount Ararat? Where are the golds? Where is the temple of Solomon that was built with pure gold? You mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find dust of gold? Let me tell you, most of them are still intact. They are buried in the sea. Because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu. 
is the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments i'm saying all of this to let you know that satan has a history the strength of satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits the strength of satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit Are we blessed very quickly keys to long life the first thing I want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest they all complement themselves you don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go no there are keys there are keys Number one, the first key to long life that the Bible reveals is speaking, choosing, releasing words of life. Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. And then we'll look at Proverbs 18, verse 21. Psalms 34, 12 to 14, and then Proverbs 18, verse 1. The first key to long life is to speak it. The first key to long life is to choose it. The first key to long life is to release it. Hallelujah. Ready? Look up. Let's read Psalm 34 verse 12. One to read. What man is he that desireth what? Life. And loveth what? Many days that he may see good. Read on. Keep what? There is a relationship. Stop between your tongue its communication and your life the bible says who is it that desire long life it says keep your tongue from evil and your lips from what speaking guile 14 depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the emphasis is 12 and 13 who is he koinonia that desires long life i don't die oh the Bible says, who is he that desires long life? Don't just laugh about what I'm saying. Because whether you think you are joking or not, the Bible says, and let it not be said before an angel, I made a mistake. Who is he that wants to activate longevity? It says, keep the... Please go to verse 13. 13, 13, 13. It says, keep thy tongue from what and your lips keep your tongue i know many of you have said kai people are beg they are exaggerating why do you want to speak please be real you be real in the earth way you will die like a chicken your reality must be the word he says i am the way i am reality i am absolute reality Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 21. Can we read Proverbs 18, verse 21? One to read. What will they eat? The fruit of what? No, 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 no. It's in your Bible. It says, they that love it shall do what? Death and life. This is Solomon, a man who received wisdom from God. He's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to. And he said, in my exploration of spiritual mysteries, I found something. Death 
and life are left in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? The Bible says, I set before you this day blessing and cursing. Is that true? Death and life. Here's my suggestion. I can't force you, but this is my suggestion. Choose life that you may live, not wish it. Choose life. Koinonia, choose life that you may live. Are you still a believer? Choose life that you may live. Choose life. I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you death and life. But this is my advice for you. Choose life. I speak life. Oh my brother. I speak life Head and not the tail You will prevail I speak life Don't give up the fight For your life Hallelujah Everybody say after me I choose life outside can you shout it i choose life those standing at the back the back there can you say i choose life don't let the devil tell you i hope you know what you're saying say it i choose life he said let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so conquer fear i choose life when you speak you release it this is a voice activated planet nothing happens until sound is released I choose life send it to the atmosphere I choose life send it ahead of your tomorrow I choose life the will of man cannot be compromised hallelujah listen Jesus said behold I Jesus the king of kings the creator of the ends of the earth I stand at the door of your heart and I keep knocking I cannot enter until your will permits me. As mighty as Jesus is, he respects the will of man. How much more Satan? Jesus, the son of the living God, the resurrected Christ, the eternal one, stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking for 60 years. If that man refuses, he goes to hell. But he was knocking. So what do you think makes you think that Satan just steps into your heart? It's called deception. This is the foundation of witchcraft. It paints a picture that is not real. It makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to ha wreak havoc in your life. Say it again, I choose life. Say it again, I choose life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? And say, Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones, tell him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I know they are in heaven. But right now I'm making my choice and my decision. Don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt and say, did they speak like that? Say, Satan, you are a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I choose life. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Write very quickly, everybody. Key number two to longevity, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Biblical key number two to longevity. 
under the word fear right reverence reverence the fear open bracket reverence of the lord proverbs chapter 10 verse 27 proverbs 10 27 Proverbs 10, 27. Everyone read. One, two, read. The fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence for God. Respect for Him. Honor for Him and His ways and what He represents prolongs days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The Bible says the fear of the Lord. There are two indexes given in the Bible to measure the fear of the Lord in a man's life. Number one, obedience to his commands. And number two, service in the house of God. Obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the Lord. Obedience. Obedience. Oh, I love him. I obey him. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 to 11. I just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say I love you. You are everything to me. And I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name on high. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. Verse 11. For by me, days shall be what? And the years of thy life shall be increased. And so the Lord spoke to Isaiah. He said, go and tell Hezekiah. You will not recover from that sickness. You will die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and said, oh Lord, remember how I have walked diligently before you. And the Lord sent Isaiah again. He said, uh, 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 uh. I remember my faithfulness. And he went back and said, the Lord said, I have added. For by me, Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied. And the years of his life shall be increased. Obedience and service. When we talk to people about obeying the principles of God, many people think that I can live my life the way I want. Longevity, brothers and sisters, hear me. Don't let westernization deceive you. Longevity is tied to your fear of the Lord. Service. There are so many people seated here inside and outside. You're not serving in any unit. You're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's a scripture there. You will live to declare. You will live to promote. You will live to frontier his kingdom. Let me tell you this. My passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives. It's to create a sense. My passion is to institutionalize God consciousness in people. To make it an institution. That everything in your life, brothers and sisters, is secondary to the pursuit of his agenda. I don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not. I can tell you an assignment. Start serving diligently in the house of God. Don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of God are just weak people who are desperate for husband. Say, Kai, you serve. Eh? The way you are behaving, don't let anyone cheat you. 
there are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself hallelujah when five minutes without your breath you are gone it doesn't matter what your agenda is it's over the greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving God that's how you cheat death that's how you cheat the grave that's how you cheat death you don't cheat death by being afraid of it you cheat death by serving God victorious in life and victorious in death Paul says for for me to live is Christ and if I die it is still gain there is no loss hallelujah as you're sitting here the Lord is speaking to you you are living your life as young as you are you think you are too busy there are many of you outside as you are looking at my face the Lord Jesus is speaking to you tonight I'm saying you are the one I'm sending this man of God to talk to when will you begin to serve God with the active years of your life say I'm not a man of God I'm a pilot so what offered oh God on the altar of sacrifice that I will serve you I told God this is all I do with my life I don't have plan B when I wake up in the morning your kingdom come oh God that's all I do are you getting blessed service is one of your greatest respect that you can do for God I'll serve I'll serve I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best with all my life. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling. I must make it as though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands you go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week and there is no sense of conviction in them to serve God that there's no service for the kingdom it's not part of their lives they come and they warm the bench and smile around and you tell them are you serving any believer that is not serving in a church not serving in a group your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom you don't deserve to live he says i shall not die but live but live there is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom god will kill a nation to preserve that man I travel all the time don't you think I don't know what I'm saying tomorrow we are on our way again to be there all the time I've seen all varieties of accidents I've seen all kinds of things I've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations we have met armed robbers we were going to um, when we were going to Obama shop, our flight was cancelled. We had to charter a car to take us by road. We left about 4.30 in the morning. Just coming out of Abuja, Abaji, going towards, just entering the route to go towards Kogi. And we saw somebody reversing. They were armed robbers. Brothers and sisters, this gentleman speaking to you, I'm not a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm educated. But I want to tell you something. The fear of the Lord can prolong the days of a man that you spend your life serving God 
during the days of our fathers the popular song is lord here am i send me right now we're saying lord here am i give me i have come i finally arrived to collect see let me tell you don't just laugh if you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your christian experience you will be unfruitful in the kingdom i want to stand before my maker i can only imagine what it would be like that was a song You know the song I'm trying to sing, right? Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine That on that day when I stand before him When we are finally done And we have conquered the earth Depopulated the kingdom of hell and turn the heart of many to righteousness that through faith after we have subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness we will stand upon the mountain and salute creation and say lord i am ready and you appear before him to be absent in the body the apostle says is to be present with the lord and he looks at you and says well done you tried and they take on that crown and you see all the matthias saying we watched you all the while while you were in that crusade we watched you while you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils the family in heaven was watching for some of us while you were roaming around gossiping and all that was your passion was oh god husband time is going god said we, we were watching you too i am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the lord I am so glad you came. We were in your life a few weeks ago. And when we went there, the organizer of the, the campus crusade, when he met me, I saw the way he was saluting me. And I said, I was wondering, what was this for? And he called me and he said, Sir, about three years or thereabout, when you came into this campus, I was just a fresh student when I came in. And when you preached, I got born again. I got filled with the Holy Spirit and today I'm still standing and doing many things. Every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people, I say, Lord, thank you. I have no business being known. They don't need to know me that I may decrease, that my face cannot heal anybody. My picture cannot bless anybody. There is one mightier than I. He's the one I live and I spend my entire life serving. Please, I speak to you. As a servant of God tonight, think about your life. Think seriously about your life. And the way you are ignoring the things of God as though there is something better. I'm not saying be a pastor. Be an addict enough. When was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel? How many souls can stand before God and say it was your giving that brought the men of God to this place? How many of you can say it was your prayer? You were interceding for every man of God. Not snoring around and complaining. How many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom? How many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom? The fear of the Lord. Let me tell you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. I have stood before kings. I have stood before millionaires. I know what honor sounds. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Impossible. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my. There is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. 
the psalmist said better is one day i rather be a doorkeeper i'm so desperate to serve you although i'm a king i choose to be an usher a sanctuary keeper than a celebrity somewhere these were men who understood god they understood the ways there are some of you here you think you are too big to join the protocol you are too big to do this you see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools unfortunately most preachers have preached service not as a proof of love for god but as a way to get things from god it is true that if they obey and serve him there are benefits but brothers and sisters hear me beyond getting things it is a proof of love so if your work is to bring this water you bring it with all sense of honor not just like you are worshiping a man oh it's a privilege to serve in the house of god it's a privilege if you are to clean the chairs you are cleaning the chairs and say lord it's a it's a privilege it's a privilege you can do without me you have chosen to do with me you are supposed to bake the cake you are seated and you know you have grace you say no i need to join the welfare department i must spend my life I, I need to contribute you are excellent in graphic oh the media needs me service 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 whether you are in zaria or not find a church find a group find a fellowship find a, a congregation of believers many of us are looking for geo and mama that's the only condition you have given God to serve him. Lord, I will serve you if I will be the mama of the ministry. I will serve you if you give me the name of my parish. The name of your parish is nothing. Let it be your passion. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed? I'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit. Because I don't want you to waste your time. Please get back into the mystery of kingdom service. Get back. You spend your time serving a guy because you love him. You go to his house. You wash his clothes. You cook. You iron. And he says, is it not too much? You say, this is the least I can do for you. Is it to express my love? I'm, I'm, I'm not embarrassed. Call me a fool. It's true. Eh? If loving you is a crime, let me be a criminal. Look at what you are saying. Look at what you are saying. Shame on any believer who is saying that. I'm telling you, I say it again. Shame on any believer that because of mundane things you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments verse 2 for length of days obedience length of days and long life together with peace shall they add to thee commandments he that loveth me is he that keeps my commands john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me and i will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him the commands of God his commandments are not burdensome brothers and sisters let's hurry up key number three to long life engaging the mystery of the blood key number three let's hurry up engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding there are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance number one in the book of exodus chapter 12 it was used to anoint the doorpost and the lintels so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people. Hallelujah. Number two, Jesus revealed it to us 
in the communion the communion in the new testament he began to teach us the mystery of the communion and then number three the mystery of what the bible calls blood sprinkling that the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them first corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30 we may not have time to read all but let's see how far we can go help us media first corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30 paul is teaching the church in corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion and when he had given thanks he break it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me next verse it says after the same manner he took the cup here and there 25 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. Wherefore, whosoever, now listen, shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily. Open your eyes, I want to show you a mystery. Unworthily. It says, this sacrament, there are two sacraments that Jesus left to the church. One is the sacrament of the communion. The second is the sacrament of baptism. Water baptism. Two of them are still valid. They are important today. It says, Whosoever shall take up the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of what? The body and the blood of the Lord. Here comes the mystery. 28. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what? He can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of Jesus Christ relieves life. And because he's, he's eating it unworthily, he will get the opposite of it. Next verse, 30. Read, please. One, two, read. Stop. For what cause? For the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment. For this cause, how many people? How many? How many people do you know have died today that they told you it was a communion that killed them? Have you ever had any death? And they told you that, ah, this death, it was communion that killed the man. Have, is it in your Bible? For this cause, did he say few? Many, many are weak. For this cause, the cause of not discerning the Lord's body, the cause of not respecting it. For this cause of not giving it the honor it says many are weak you believe the bible right many are what sick and many sleep wow for this cause trivializing the body of christ not discerning the power it can release not discerning that this represents the body of jesus beaten battered by whose stripes we are healed it says for this cause that means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily for that cause you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live exodus chapter 12 from verse 7 to 8 the mystery of the blood and then 12 to 13 we're not going there we don't have the time we have to move on to other things i'm just giving you references exodus chapter 12 7 to 8 and then 12 to 13 and also verse 23 these are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death the bible calls it the destroyer that when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel it will leave and trouble you not hallelujah praise the lord key number four honor to parents key number four let's be fast please honor to parents open bracket both physical and spiritual ephesians chapter 6 from verse 2 to 3 honor to parents 
both physical and spiritual are mystery keys to long life one to read is projected one to read honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with a promise verse 3 was the blessing that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long where it told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long for honoring parents how many of us have dishonored our parents yes they are foolish yes they've acted stupidly yes they may have behaved in a way but do you honor them some of us beat up our parents some of us beat up daddy and mommy we think i'm a big boy i'm a big girl i'm now married i have children i'm driving a jeep let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father curse your father or your mother let me show you this proverbs 20 20 a grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers read it please one to read his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness whosoever can dare to curse the father and the mother that brought him to the earth now get this i'm not saying that they lead you to partition so as for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation no matter what it is look at me david twice had the opportunity to kill saul is that true are you bible students david had the opportunity to kill saul he caught his rope and went away with it he said i will not be the one to kill god's anointing how many times have people run their mouths talking about men of God you sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of God just talking and smiling the Bible says honor your father and your mother whether spiritual or physical it said they that rule well among you deserve double honor honor them that rule well when they have proven a life of integrity not human worship not fear but a sense of honor respect I honor my parents in life and in death hallelujah some of you have elderly people come around you can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling and say you came late please I don't want anything to inconvenience me you are there shaking your weapon up and down instead of you to stand up and say mama please you can sit down and she say no 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 my daughter insist insist say mama sit down it's not about being a virtuous woman it's about life and death life and death it's in your bible i'm not the one saying it it's in your bible say i choose to honor my father and my mother how many of you pray for your men of god how many of you pray for ministers you stand here criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal instead of you to get to the place of prayer you stand there saying i always knew i always suspected the way i've been looking at that man you see that continue the bible says he that cursed his father and his mother his lamp his life will be taken away to obscure darkness how many have died as a result of this honor when a father fights his son he loses his honor when a son fights his father spiritual or physical he loses his life that's why many people sadly to say many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries break out and jeopardize the life of the jew thinking god called them notice very few of them ever last because he that dishonored his father is lamb Are we learning number what now number five walking in wisdom the fifth key to long life walking in wisdom proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16 those outside if you're still with us say amen god bless you all right proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16 walking in wisdom 
walking in wisdom foolishness can take a man's life foolishness can cut short a man's life walking in wisdom hallelujah the bible says happy is the man that what finds wisdom that means you have to look for it and the man that getteth understanding 14 for the merchandise of it are better than silver and they gain thereof than fine gold 15 she is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her 16 length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor if you embrace wisdom it will also open you up to long life look at me how many people do you know who cannot drive hello they cannot drive and then they go and carry a truck and kick it because they are trying to impress their colleagues are you seeing how foolishness costs shots the life of people and then they go to the road they have given the spirit of death unrestrained access how many people drive their cars foil is leaking down are you getting what i'm saying foil is leaking and they don't care there are people who who transfer is a gallon that is in their car or their bus they connect it directly to the carburetor and from the bus, from the foil is feeding the vehicle and they are there running they are smiling how many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal the tire is so it is the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight that's the degree to which the car is disaligned and yet he plans to travel to lagos the bible says wisdom is profitable to direct are we blessed a man takes beer alcohol and tells you can i give you a ride he say really you get into the car wisdom you have trusted your life to a foolish man are we getting blessed please how many things do people do go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes directly under your bed is one wire that's been there two years naked wire how many people dry their clothes on naked wires or at least part of it is beginning to cut life wire they dry their clothes and smile they have been doing it i i know how to do it no 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 i'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives you plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie there are many of us the way you own your car there is something only you know how to touch you touch the wires and then something down you just touch it and it sparks cas, cas, and then the thing starts you've been doing it for many years preserved by mercy you think you are wise god is speaking to you tonight how many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground sparking you see it sparking and there is foil directly under yet we went to school is god teaching us wisdom There are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep foil. You buy one jerry can of foil and keep it closed. There are babies there. There are all kinds of things. People are inhaling it. There are others you never eat well. I'm showing you how people partner with Satan to destroy their lives. You never eat well. There's no difference from the day God you were in poverty and now that God is even helping you. There is no difference. Look at mechanics. Look at what they eat. Same thing. One lady comes with, 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 with a lele or something and serves them. That's what they eat every day, every night. They take tea in the night. See, that kind of unhealthy. That's why the life expectancy level of Africa is about, is it 30 or 40? Scientifically proven. We're not talking of demons here. We're just talking of carelessness. Say carelessness. Yes. Yes. People do all kinds of things. Risky things. And we think there is no problem to it. Very risky things. 
It's only God that can tell the kind of risks people take every day. Every day. There's food on fire. You made yam. The water is boiling. You want to use your hand to carry it out. Can't you look for a spoon? If the spoon is missing, can't you be patient? Why must you cut you? You came complete. Why must you go back with one hand? Yes, you will make heaven, but is that a rich life? Is that a rich life? Why will you cut short your life? Because of carelessness. It's God speaking to us. Number six, the sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death, infirmity, and destruction. We are getting deeper now. We are getting to the area where we are going to pray. Luke 10 verse 19. Death is a spirit, brothers and sisters. I've taught you this. Behold! See, don't be ignorant. I give you power to tread upon serpents, upon scorpions, and over how many? How many? All the powers of the enemy. He says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. I have given you. If you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately, he said, with wise counsel, make war. wise counsel make war i have given it to you death is a spirit infirmity is a spirit destruction is a spirit the spirit does not just work by default when the spirit of death is in an environment what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity this is the standard operation there are a few exemptions however but the standard way the spirit of death the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey are you getting what I'm saying now let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic a subtopic under point six the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12 may i remind you ladies and gentlemen if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real are you hearing what i'm saying if anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft i just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits please listen to what i'm saying because it's very important the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up let's just write the scriptures media copy them down and then you give it to us nahum chapter 3 verse 4 ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23 proverbs 1 11 and then psalms 10 verse 8 there are many more but we'll just stop here give us deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up everyone read want to read there shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what pass through fire or that uses divination or an observer of times an enchanter or a witch next verse or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer next verse for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. God himself identifies that there is a dark side to our world. There are enchanters. There are stargazers. There are men that manipulate the constellation against the destinies of men. The church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of Satan. Nahum chapter 3 verse 4. Just look up so that um, since it's projected. One to read. Because of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot, the what? Mistress of witchcraft. Thou 
that sell what? Look at what she sells. She can see. Look at her goods. The way you sell pure water. The mistress of witchcraft. And say you can come and meet me. And I will give you Africa. I can give you this village. I can sell that soul to you. It's in your Bible. He says she sells what? Nations through her wardom. Her fraternity with human beings. That means human agents come to meet her. I want access to a territory. And what does she sell again? Families. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? That there are witchcraft activities that sell families. Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Ezekiel 13, 17 to 23. is a long reading. Let's rush. Are you still with me? Alright, let's hurry up to 23. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes, and make what? Handkerchiefs. What version is this? Okay. It's okay. Upon the head of every stature. Hey, let me show you what the Bible is saying. Where's my handkerchief? They sew pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what? To do what? To hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men. They take on a handkerchief, put it on a statue and call your name. It's in your Bible. They have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you. That is a nice world for as long as you just say, God... I'm here and I love you. Everything is all right. Welcome to planet Earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival. They hunt souls. He said, will ye hunt the souls of my people? They are hunting. They are everywhere. Let me tell you. Especially for Africa. Please don't pretend like you are coming from the Caribbeans. You were born an African. You belong to an African family. And you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of God will not need to go through this. But for now, we must pay that price. Are you there? Will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Next verse. Let's look at it quickly. And will ye people, oh, and will ye what? Me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread. To slay what? Read that part. To slay the souls that should not die to slay souls that should not die and to do what to save the souls that are alive the mystery of spiritual exchange that a man will see that his time is here because the wicked shall be cut short and he will say in my place i invoke this and i donate this person die in my stead it was an ancient practice that king used when they were about to kill them, they killed their children and an indignation rose and the war ended. It's still being practiced today. Men who give others for their lives. I prophesy to you, any man that invokes your name on any altar, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, they will carry their dead body from that altar. I say it again, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that any charm, any altar that invokes your name, to die the death of another may my God visit them with judgment next next verse Lord God behold I am against your pillows wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls to make them fly watch this look at the mystery of witchcraft and I will tear them from your arms and we let the souls go even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly when verse what now two verses left your handkerchiefs i will also tear your instruments of divination those those mediums that you use in covens that you flip and call the names of people and somebody is walking peacefully on the street all of a sudden somebody comes with a knife and kills him and they say he just died no sir he did not just die an invocation happening in the realm of the spirit
and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted say amen. amen and they shall know that i am the lord your god let's read 22 because i can't read all those ones whom i have not made sad listen and strengthen the hands of the wicked that you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life look at this guys the summary is that this is a transaction of life and death happening in the underworld whereas there are human beings moving you are minding your business they are discussing business with your life i prophesy to you again oh lord god of israel i speak that anyone under the sound of my voice that is being manipulated by stargazers that is being manipulated by necromancers they who manipulate the constellations i declare in the name of jesus christ may those ovens catch fire may those ovens tonight catch fire may those ovens catch fire Proverbs 1 verse 11 Proverbs 1 verse 11 Shabarato Totobaya Watch this If they say come with us let us lie and wait for what Let us do what Let us wait for blood Let us lock privately for the innocent without cause Meaning they did not do anything but we desire their blood so we are waiting let's wait for the day that they want to take a step let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit ah. the whole world lieth in wickedness if you are yet to be aware be aware this night write the following scriptures down we may not have time to read them but this is the lot of the wicked this is what god will do with wicked people okay let's look at one of them micah chapter 5 verse 12 but one other scripture you will write this is the lot of witchcraft psalms 109 verse 17 to 18 just write that we won't read it let's read micah chapter 5 verse 12. when the lord opened my eyes to this scripture i was amazed one to read and shout amen after you read it one to read He said, I will cut off witchcraft. I will cut it off. Because if I don't cut it off, they will cut short your life. So I will cut it off. Is God helping us? Verse, I mean number seven, quickly. There are eight points I'm giving you. Seven. Activating the ministry of angels. The seventh key to long life. Activating the ministry of angels. Hebrews 1.14 activating the ministry of angels angels are real they are real i have seen them i see them all the time angels are very very real are they not all ministering spirits meaning you cannot see them in the physical except god opens your eyes or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you sent forth to do what to minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation are you an heir of salvation are you a partaker of salvation there are angels allocated to you but they never act until you activate their ministry they never act until you activate their ministry until you activate their ministry and you activate their ministry in the place of prayer you activate their ministry through words you release angels you release angels you activate their ministry angels are real and they help believers we we'll look at a few scriptures they protect they preserve and they contend with wicked spirits part of the assignment of angels with respect to spiritual warfare and preservation of the saints because God knows that alone we cannot make it. There is an advantage that wicked spirits have. They have advantage of the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. And so he gave us angels. Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to 14. Don't turn there. Just write it. Joshua 5 verse 13 to 14. Joshua has an, an encounter with an angel. 
project for us project for us second kings 19 verse 35 second kings 19 verse 35 while she's doing that in the book of daniel chapter 10 when you read from verse 13 the bible says that archangel michael contended with the prince of persia he was trying to stop him from coming down to destroy daniel but daniel was activating the ministry of that angel in the place of prayer when we pray we activate angels when we speak we activate angels second kings you can see the angels standing to fight warfare for men read and it came to pass that night that the angel of the lord went out and smote in the camp of the assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand and when they rose up early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses one angel imagine how powerful they are about 185 thousand people killed by one angel in one night when you activate them Jude chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible tells us that when Satan came to carry the body of Moses Satan wanted to come and carry the body of Moses and Michael the archangel again he came to contend with Satan so angels fight to preserve our bodies they fight to preserve our lives preserve our bodies preserve our destinies Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 read verse 11 want to read for he shall give what his angels charge over thee hallelujah to keep thee in all thy ways verse 12 and they shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone hallelujah the key to activating them is found in Psalms 103 verse 20 Psalm 103 verse 20 please begin to prepare the oil there's, there's an anointing service that will happen here shortly very quickly quickly bring the oil for me please don't open it yet just bring it these are the instructions that the Lord gave me Psalms 103 verse 20 go ahead and read one to read bless the Lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do what his commandment how do they walk hearkening they walk at the instance of his word they walk at the instance of his word as you pray and declare the word you activate them you activate them you activate them as you speak God's word the moment they hearken to the word they start walking until a word is spoken the angels are not activated the moment they hearken to the word they start moving hallelujah these are eight keys that the Lord revealed to me in my place of retreat and he said teach my people these are the keys to long life these are the keys to long life you can live long and the Lord gave me an instruction he said according to the mystery of the blood and the mystery of the oil anoint my people I don't do foolish things give me the oil I'm not one of those men of God that just does things impulsively and the Lord gave me an instruction he said when I was done with that retreat I should come back and based on two scriptures the Lord gave me Isaiah 10 27 something will happen in this place tonight Mande Brando Susopratia Shibro Satalande Kras Kobrash Tilaba Shibro Zetetete Baladabaya and it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder it shall come to pass that those spells of enchanters and stargazers and they that haunt your soul unto death it shall come to pass 
that by a mystery as revealed of the Lord of Sabaoth the avenger of men that it shall come to pass that at the instance of his word that it shall be taken from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of the anointing there are charms that must be broken because of the anointing there are people sentenced to death sentenced to accidents sentenced to untimely death by the mystery by the mystery of the oil the second scripture exodus chapter 12 please please everyone turn there i sense the anointing of the spirit very strongly right now please turn there this is the instruction that the lord gave me make sure everyone is participating right now no matter how far those following us online they can get oil if, if they have access to verse 7 please verse 7 and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it says they shall take the blood and put it on the lintel go to verse 12 for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance I am the Lord this is what the Lord told me in the secret place he said I'm arising as a mighty man the blood of the innocent Christ before me that's what the Lord told me and the Lord said a destroyer is going to move across the nations and the Lord told me vengeance there will be vengeance upon witchcraft I had the Lord and he revealed this to me my eyes was open in the spirit and I saw like a cloud moving across territories and the Lord told me by the mystery of preservation you preserve my people that's why I'm carrying this oil is serving both as oil and spiritually as the mystery of the blood rise up on your feet and begin to blast in tongues thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her day the set time inside and outside pray hallelujah can we have the plates please very quickly lift your voice and say after me in the name of jesus come on say it like a believer in the name of jesus every power of witchcraft manipulating my life and my destiny by the mystery of the blood i command judgment upon you lift your voice and pray I shall not die but leave to declare pray Oh, 
Aleluya. Aleluya. We just have two prayer points. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every power that wants to cut short my life and exchange my life for someone else's own. In the name of Jesus, I come against you. Lift your voice and speak. Stargazers, necromancers, those that trade the souls of men, they cut short destinies through up. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare the seal of the blood over my life, my loved ones, my going out, my coming in. No accident shall take my life. No terrorist shall take my life. No sickness shall take my life. I am secure in Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your loved ones. No death. No death. No death. The destroyer cannot plague my life. The destroyer cannot plague my family. The destroyer cannot plague my destiny. My going out. Preserve. Coming in. By the blood, by the blood. Hallelujah. 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 You are looking at this olive oil but this is no ordinary oil the lord instructed me to pray through the night over this oil and release the power of preservation that it becomes the mystery of the blood in the spirit and that's exactly what i've done and lord i lift this in the name of jesus i come under this apostolic office in the name of the lord jesus and i declare that over this territory of zaria over koinonia over our families the plague of death will not find expression it will not cut short the lives of people in the name of Jesus Christ father let this oil lose its earthly significance and take on a heavenly significance in the name of Jesus let the terrestrial become celestial let the earthly become heavenly and Lord let this carry preservation power in the name of Jesus now watch this we're going to do it very orderly and very fast I prayed for this I will anoint the heads of department um, two of them will go outside they will just be in front your job is to walk orderly I'm sure they'll coordinate them just take a portion put it on your head and come back and blast in tongues begin to blast preservation begin to speak and release life to yourself hallelujah go ahead and begin to pray dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 